Tell you what, it's surprising how heavy that four mil, 100 meters of four mil is compared to a two five. That's 30 meters of 10 mil, some one mil and some three core, three core and um, for smoke alarms and two way lighting, so let's go. I'm going to nip to Rexal first, it's the closest electrical wholesaler um, to the job. I don't normally use them, but they're a good bunch of guys there. I've used them a few times. Um, I've got to pick up some four inch tray and some uni strut. Uh, where this water pipe is boxing in, I'm going to, I thought I may as well just put a bit of, um, it's never ever going to be seen again. <clears throat> I could have used Copex. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm just going to put a bit of tray down there. So I ain't done a bit for a while, so it'd be nice to have a little, get the hacksaw out. All right, here we go, back again, back at the job. So I've started to wire lighting, getting that all sorted today. Power and lighting's gonna be done today. And then tomorrow, central heating and cooker circuit. So picked up a bit of uni strut. I've got some plastic capping just to go on the walls because what they're gonna do is bond the walls out so I can just fix the boxes and um, cap the cable. So that's great, I haven't got to do any chasing out as such. Um, we're just gonna cap with plastic, which is fine. And I've got some uni strut and tray because um, I've got a lot of cables coming down here to this switch. This is getting boxed out, so I'm going to put the tray in here. I thought it'd be quite nice. Never ever going to be seen again, but oh well. Better than using Copex. So I haven't been to this job for a while because the owner suspected had coronavirus. He's actually fine, so that's absolutely fine. So see, I've got some cables down here. This is going to be a switch, which is going to do some underpowerment lights here and some spotlights in this ceiling here, okay? Nice little trick, actually, because this is a zone, allegedly a zone, 150 either way. So a nice little way of getting those cables for the heating system is going to be bring them down this zone, go back entry. It's going to save causing any damage to this utility um, wall here. Yeah. And what I've done is rather than bring all my cables up to the um, airing cupboard, I've stripped all the old stuff out, which you saw in the previous video, and I'm going to bring the cables so all I've got to bring down is the two two port valves and the tank stat. That's got to come down to the under here. And then I'll bring all the thermostat cables and everything into that cupboard and do a wire and center in the cupboard under the, under the um, sink there. Okay, just a quick update where I'm up to. So my spotlights are now wired six in here. We're kind of going to treat this beam as a feature, so I've spaced them out equally in this gap, and then these four are spaced out equally. I've started to wire the underpowerment lights, so they'll come down and be left above the cupboards that are here. Then the drivers will be mounted above one, two, switched together. They're going to be switched from here now. And then they've got um, under cabinet lights going in a cabinet here, so one, two, and those two will be switched from over there. And then that's going to be just two wade to here, so these six can be switched on from here. So I'm getting there, the heavens have opened. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna crack on with the light in and then we'll wire some uh, four mil radial power. So I had a little chat with a client today and because they're keeping this brickwork exposed, they wanna keep this exposed, they're gonna clean it off and repoint it and take the plugs out and stuff. These beams have got to be clad with fireboard, uh, pink plasterboard, so it's gonna leave an edge. So they're then gonna either put timber on them or whatever, I don't know what they're gonna do, but we're gonna be left with a nice edge. So I just suggested that we fit an LED strip all the way along this beam. So that's what we're gonna do. And hopefully there's gonna be enough lip for me to mount the driver up here and not be able to see it. And then that is also gonna be switched from over here, okay? So this is the floor above. Hello. This is the apprentice. This is Andy, um, if you remember him from previous videos. So as you can see, I'm working around the temporary kitchen table at the minute just wired, I don't know, it'd be too dark. Uh, no, it's okay, isn't it? So I've drilled a hole up here because I need to get a cable down for a thousand wide unit that's going in here that's gonna have LEDs in it. So the driver will be mounted above the cupboard. So I'll have to chase in to the top of cupboard height here and over here. So these two will be linked together and they're gonna be switched from this switch over here. So I've drilled a hole and the joists run this way. This is all tiled floor that is staying above here. So I'm having to fish through the existing spotlights to a run of holes I've drilled across here, and then it will run across. I can fish back across and then drop down to the switch. I've also got to bring the thermostat this way and a two-way cable, lighting cable, to two-way these lights from that switch to this switch. So I just nipped to the van because um, 
between this ceiling and bathroom, there's insulation. I think they've done it to try and reduce noise downstairs, which is fine. Um, so my cables will be sort of sandwiched between the plasterboard and the insulation. So I'm hoping that there's no noggins in this floor and I can go all the way through. <laughs> uh, hmm. Freaking out. What do you reckon? Have they put a row of nogs in here? I hope not. Not a big deal, which means I've got to drill another hole. Just means I've got to calculate where I think the frigging thing is. This ceiling is getting overboarded, by the way, so it doesn't not matter what I do to it. So all I'll do now is go back this way, make sure it meets up in the same place, and then that will just confirm that I think there is a bit of wood there. No, he's gone absolutely straight through this time, which is great. So I'll come back here, get my hand up this little hole and see if I can feel my rod anywhere. There's some pipes. It's moving, so that's a good sign. He's good I've got little hands because these holes are pretty small. Where is it? There we go. There he is. So I'll find the end and then hopefully I can get him out here. Like that. Put my cable on, which is there. And pull him out to where I want him to go. What a faff, eh? So I'm hoping today I'm gonna get this all wired, but it's not looking likely. So I know the builder's pretty keen to get back in. Um, I think he must have another job on now because I ain't seen him. So um, um, he's probably got another job on. So they, that's what happens. They get their foot in the door, finish off, and then they just split between, which is fine. Um, so yeah, that would just be long enough now to come to this hole, down to this cabinet, which is fine. And then I'll wire from this cabinet here to that switch. <clears throat> Nipped home actually. Um, that, that little fan. Oh, my Kita fans turned up. Come home for lunch anyway. The little fans turned up. Oh. What an absolute lifesaver. Look, JE Electrical, mate. Cheers. Instagram. Saw it on his story and I thought I've got to get one. Bloody lovely, that is. Right. I'm happy to say all the lighting's wired. All the smokes are wired. Everything's wired. That's all done. That's all wired. All the pendant lights, palmet lights are all wired, okay? So now I'm going to get on with a four mil radial. So my first socket's going to be down here. Um, and then going to bring it round, around through my little way I've got there and then drop it over to this kitchen area, under the island, back up and over. And it's just going to feed two sockets over there. So not a, not a very big one, but um, I thought I'd go with a four mil. So we can up the breaker size. These drums are now for how old Hell of a lot heavier than 2.5. Um, yeah, four mil. Stranded, look. I think it's seven cores and then a, I think it's a 1.5 earth still. I don't think it's 2.5, I think it's 1.5. Um, so I'm just pulling this leg first through here. It'll then run along, along here. Drop down to the first socket point. What I'm gonna do is, cause we got a fridge freezer, um, extractor hood etc i'm going to put a couple of these switches in the cupboard just to keep this to a, we want to sort of go for a minimum look so i'll put the switches in the cupboards and then we're just going to have one usb double socket here and one that side so it should be good so what i hopefully get done today is i've started putting this formal in i've just left a little loop here because this is where my switch is going to go in the cupboard this is for the um under cabinet lights so that'll go on top but this wall is only going to get skimmed because they've only had to put that structural bit in for that beam. So I'll have to chase this in fully. But everywhere else, like over there in this wall, I can just screw stuff to it and they're going to bond to the box, a 20 mil box or whatever I decide to use. Um, so that will get chased in. But what I'm going to do first is get all the cables in place. Then I'll have probably like a chasing day, if you like, um, just going around getting all the cables in. I actually went home because my house isn't very far from this job. When I had lunch, I had to friggin' change my um, 
I had to change my shirt, I was that sweaty. It's horrible, isn't it? But that's all I'm doing now is rather than pulling this all the way through, I'm gonna pull this four mil down this long run. This is there's loads of room, look, behind this um Celotex and these buttons they put in for me. I can run this all the way down, get it in the positions I want it to be in, and then I can um as I said I'll come back another day and um probably next week some point and I can do all the capping and stuff and get all the boxes in the right places but just for now if the builder ever wanted to come and do the plaster bordering on the ceiling um, he could come and do that you know what I mean it's not gonna affect me then because because I'll be finished so now I've got to try and push a four mil through the copex that the builder Mick Nick Bundy didn't put that bit in. The builder put that bit in. Um, comes up here, so I'm gonna just try and give it a push now. I'll set you up. And you can see if he's gonna come out, yeah? In there. I've got to keep this length because the builder brought it out here and it should be over here, so I'm gonna have to bring that leave that little bit of length on there. Depo builder stuff we call it. There it is. Right. So now we we'll pull a bit of slack. I've got I've got to put what I'm going to do is midpoint T. I've um, got slated for this, not doing it, so I'll do it on this one. Because it's only going to do a socket on this island, one socket. So I'll just do a midpoint T and then it'll be marked up. I'll mark it up on the thing. So that's plenty for that. We'll just put a bit more just in case. And there we go, that's that. So what I'll do here is when I've got my spur points, rather than putting four mils, so you'll have three four mils. Um, go into one point because it's a bit it's a bit fat and a bit tough um, this is only going to do a fridge freezer here so this will have a 2.5 so it'll be fused down to 13 amp and then it will go up to a connection point and then it's a integrated fridge freezer so that will push back also with the um, extractor hood I could do that that could go on a 1.5 but I'll put it on a 2.5 put a 3 amp fuse that will go then to their again connection unit or a single um, socket unswitch socket behind there and then dishwasher um it's literally going to be a socket on that pillar and then a spur point here which will be on the radial four mil radial and then it will be um 13 amp fuse spur and then it will spur down in 2.5 to the um point again it will be a flex outlet i guess behind the dishwasher so just a thought because let me just turn that fan off thanos because this is a 13 amp double socket and I've got three four mils coming in here, um, sockets don't accept three four mils, they'll only accept two four mils or four two fives. So what I'll have to do is put a spur point here, wire this into the spur point, so that'll be effectively a 13 amp spur, which is absolutely fine. Um, these two will be on the radial, that'll be a, a radial in four mil, which is fine, and then I'll just put a socket and a spur, mark it up, um, island power, easy peasy. Right, one last little thing. We're going to be having a colour changing LED up here. So I've mounted up. Um, that will be wide enough for the driver to go up there. So I've got a cable in. We'll then have a controller so that it can be a colour changer. Um, under these are just going to be warm white off a normal switch. These are going to be warm white off a normal switch. And then because I couldn't be bothered to get a switch cable all the way from here, all the way around the houses, I'll put a 3 amp fuse spur off of this radial, so socket, then 3 amp fuse spur, and I'll put like a kinetic switch or a click mode, whatever, and I'll put it in a wireless switch here, and it will then turn on this island palmetty light stuff. So quite interesting once we get into that, but um, yes, yeah, getting there now. All my cables are getting dropped in where they need to be. So yeah, we're getting there. Heating tomorrow, and I'll do me a bit of tray. So I'm just about to do this bit of tray that goes up and down this wall because it's the easiest way to get all those cables sat nicely. Um, so I picked up four inch tray, I think it is. 
<clears throat> just some light, u light gauge uni strut stuff, yeah, four inch. So you didn't have any standoff, so I'm gonna cut one, two, four standoff brackets in uni strut. And I'll do those at the, exactly the same width. Um, so there's just no overhang. So I'll do them at four inches. Simply mark it four inches and cut it. But this is the bench um, that every electrical YouTuber and obviously a lot of other sparks and workmen in the UK have. It's really good because it comes with the two um, the two brackets, um, the hold off clamps that um, keep it nice and sturdy for you when you're cutting. And I won't bother getting the angle grinder out for this because it's pointless. I'll do it the old fashioned way. Do it the old fashioned way. Four, eight, 12, 16. That's good, I can count in fours, isn't it? shallow gauge because um that gives you a good workout in the morning so just give that a little file now and um you're good to go this has got horrible counterbalance that's why the bench is rocking if this was like half the size it, it wouldn't have that horrible rocking sensation on the bench but that's all right insane principle with the tray it's a two inch two meters okay it's actually a really skinny bit of tray. So I need two meters. I'm marking this end and I can pull him down this way and cut him on the end of the bench again. So two meters is there. I'm probably gonna go in between, so I'll go a, bit, a little bit less. Just save cutting through the, um, the press out. You know, they punch out these holes, save cutting through there. I've always ended up with like a real snotty edge. So we'll go through the edge of there. And as I said, you won't end up with that cut through the middle of all those punch out holes they do for you. So you normally you'd mount these with Zebedees, Zebs, channel nuts, whatever you want to call them. Um, but in this instance, I'm just going to use long screws and sandwich it between the, the bracket, the black plate like that. And then do two, two inch tens or something with some washers through the fixing. And just so you know, the only reason I'm not wearing gloves and stuff is because I keep having to come back with them forwards to the camera, but by all means, this is stuff sharp. I filed that now, but it is sharp. So get your gloves on. If you're using a grinder or a G recip saw, get your goggles, get your earmuffs on. I'm using a hacksaw. There's no chance of any um, swarf or um, metal shards coming up in my eyes because I'm just doing it controlled with my hacksaw for the camera, yeah? So wear your PPE. So my bit of tray's in. So all I've got to do now is dress the cables in nicely, water bond will swoop off and go there, and then I've got to drill a hole sort of out the side. I might drill and put some um, grommets in. Back entry to switch position. It's obviously going to be off centre on this column because it's getting built out, so I've got to calculate where this is going to get built out to because we want the switch to be sat dead centre, so it'll probably end up being something like that rather than there. It'll be there. We'll see. I'm just going to move on to doing some um, boiler controls. Just done a primitive drawing, so airing cupboard. So that's tank stat. This is in my manifold slash wiring centre. So that's a two core nerf. These are two two port valves. <clears throat> one does rads, one does hot water. So they need a three core. And they need a three core each and a two core for live and neutral. They can share that. So they'll go to a whisker box. I'll show you this when I do it. Thermostat needs a three core back to the wiring centre. Thermostat for underfloor needs a free core back to Warren Centre. Boiler's got local power and it's having a hive um, dual thermostat thing there. Um, so that will get its power from there. And then the electrician's put in two, two cores up to the airing cupboard. I'll reroute those down to the manifold. That will then give the programmer the live and neutral it needs. And then, 
switch the heating on, it will go through here up to the tank stat, turn on, and then um, hot water, sorry, and if you turn the heating on, does the same, comes live to here, and then if one of the thermostat calls for heat, it'll open the relevant valve. I've actually missed off another valve here, that will do underfloor. But unless this is on, then the thermostats won't activate the valves to call the boiler on for heating, yeah? Fairly simple, actually. I've printed off a few drawings, and you can sort of mash mash the two drawings together, look. So that's two zones. That's what we've effectively got with this as well, yeah? Advantage of the 150 zone here, and then I've bought my... These are the two cables that the previous spark put in um, for the heating. I've rerouted them down this wall. Drop behind my switch so they're in the zone, and then they drop down, go through the wall. They were in the 150, and that's the light in, in the zone. I just popped down my garage. Um, I think I've got some washers and stuff in here. I've been scratching around. I did buy some, but you know when you buy something and then you lose the... Um, you actually lose what you're looking for. I've got a box full of like miscellaneous crap here. Um, but I don't think I've got anything in here. And also, um, I just had a phone call from Nick Bundy. I don't know if you subscribe to his channel. You should do. I'll put a link here. Go and subscribe to his channel. He's just phoned me. He's actually on a job and he's run out of Copex. So, Nick, mate, I've got um, one, two, three, four, five bundles here, mate. So, um, yeah, if you nick round tonight, bud, you, you can have that. All right. Um, yeah. All right, that's it for this one. Thanks for joining me on another video. I'm absolutely shattered. I had a late one yesterday, half six, and today it's half four, quarter to five now. So give the video a thumbs up. I do appreciate the thumbs up. Thanks for all the subs. Thanks for coming back. Take care. See you on the next one.